Welcome, everybody. We have another great interview with our great uh, guest, Florence Citruk. I don't need to introduce her to the harp world, but of course, as we have also guests, I mean, the, uh, the audience from other uh, subjects than the harp world, I would like to really give, give a little point of, of her biography. So I would like to introduce her to those who has not been able to, to meet Florence Citruk in person yet. Flora Zitruk is of Southern German and Italian Sephardic, Sephardic original and had, has just celebrated 40, 40 years of her music career with a concert life, transmitted at Indiana University Jacob School of Music and dedicated to her teachers, Marielle Nordman, Susan McDonald, a legendary pianist, Georgi Sebuk, who predicted at the time that Florence will become one of the finest artists in her field. She started to play the harp at age of six and has since concertized in 36 countries with leading orchestras and chamber music partners worldwide. With a repertoire from Renaissance to music of our time, she has been especially recognized for her intelligent programming and passionate advocacy of composers who have dedicated works to her. Additional studies included early music with harpsichordist Robert Hill, as well as musicology and philosophy at Freiburg Albert Ludwigs University, where she earned her degrees. She's a soft after jury member of important competitions in her field, such as the USA International Harp Competition and has directed the Israel International Harp Contest from 2012 to 2015. She furthermore directed several international music festivals and founded the Elias Blake Arvaz Festival dedicated to the virtuoso of his birth town in England. A passionate pedagogy, she was appointed at Geneva University of Music in Switzerland and then as the youngest professor in her field, a position she filled for nearly 15 years with the international prize winners before being appointed in 2017 following the retirement of legendary harpist Susan McDonald at Indiana University of Music in Bloomington, United States. As well as, as holding the position of guest professor at Krakow Music Academy in Poland, with the largest class since 2014. In the course of the pandemic 2020 and the international re restrictions, she decided to bring her family home and lives with her three young children in southern Germany, being appointed in June 2020 at Kalado uh, University for the Applied Arts in Zurich in Switzerland, which is specialized specials in online curricula for music students. I think it's uh, just really a uh, big, uh, big pleasure for us to have this guest today with, with the Harp Channel interview. And I'm really very honored and very pleased to welcome my dear friend, Florence Citruk to our interview. Welcome, Florence. Thank you, dearest Jana. It is really, as you just said, a friendship of decades. And I'm very honored to be with you it is you are the giant of our profession it is such a generosity what you're doing for all of us and also for the non-harpists of course thank you so very much it's a wonderful moment to be with you and i must say i wish to hug you <laughs> it's, been, <laughs> it's been at least three years that we have not seen each other in person Absolutely. Yes. But it's really my big pleasure that you had time and that we managed to, to in your very busy schedule, even in this pandemic time, very busy schedule that you managed to, to make time for us during the rehearsals, because you had the rehearsal today for tomorrow's concert. That's what I can already now say, but you can also, of course, talk about it. But first, Florence, I'm really happy to see you because it has been really three years, but we know since I don't know. I was 17 years old at the time in Bayreuth. We met for the first time and you were years earlier, you were younger than me, but it was really so lovely and always so, so friendly to be with you. And I'm so glad that we can now talk like, like friends, like a really wonderful, wonderful meeting. Florence, can you tell to all of us 
how did you come to be the harpist and what was the background of being the harpist you'd had some family who was musician or tell us something about this oh my goodness this is like a long story maybe if you allow me to first say where i am and why i'm here and Absolutely. it sounds it sounds almost a little bit um how can i say um no i don't find the word but of course um, we are not really busy right now. We're in a very special time. And uh, mm -hmm. at the same time, especially at you, it was extreme how busy we had to be immediately um, to, to find a way in this mm -hmm. pandemic um, to stay connected. But it is true that right now, it's for me a new beginning. Um, I drove yesterday um, about almost a thousand kilometers, so a bit less in miles, to Berlin my old hometown um, to uh, be ready for a concert tomorrow, which is my first one since the lockdown. So the last one was at IU on 7th of March. That's the 40 years you were mentioning. And uh, so tomorrow this is a restart and it, it, it feels very, very special. Um, even the town is almost ghosty. Uh, in the hotel, there are two guests. And you see that it is an incredibly beautiful hotel. Um, it's actually a, a former uh, concert hall. It's the Ermela Palais. If anybody mm -hmm. ever goes to Berlin, it's worth looking at it. It's of the time of Mendelssohn. And uh, they kept the historic ambiente. And uh, they, I also played here once about 15 years ago. And now the concert tomorrow will be in the Mendelssohn house where Felix Mendelssohn Bartoli and his sister Fanny lived. Mm -hmm. And the program is dedicated, and it's with a wonderful young German violinist, Victoria Kaunzner. And mm -hmm. since we also play for Fanny Mendelssohn, it also works uh, for from her. She's a composer um, virtuoso. So just to say that a little bit, that's why I'm in Berlin. Um, I'm living uh, in my home area in the south of Germany. We had to return uh, roughly four weeks ago from the US. And actually... Um, the pandemic can be far away from you as much as very close. And in this mm -hmm. case, it was very close. And I can speak about this a little bit later. But uh, you are asking for my family. Um, so I don't know where to start. <laughs> you want to know the father <laughs> or the mother or the brothers or siblings? From your parents, actually. Because how did you come to be a musician? And how did you, if you had been some kind of inspiration from your family or it just came that you wanted to be the musician by yourself as the first one? It's, it's a very good question, and I would like to say with humbleness, do we really know what makes us a musician? You have children, I have children, and um, it, it is a second way to see how did we maybe get into music. Um, I would like to say my both parents are very musical people, but they're not musicians. Mm -hmm. So my father, for example, he, he speaks six languages, and uh, he, he traveled the world. Mm -hmm. And my mother is a very scientific mind and she loves to go into details while uh, being a language scientist. Mm -hmm. And uh, she worked also worldwide uh, for, for the German, not government, but um, uh, in, in some ways she was serving uh, the German embassy. And so um, she has also seen the world and I think all of that maybe is a mix but then you also have the wonderful south of germany with a lot of good food and wine and sunshine and <laughs> i don't know we have a lot of musicians coming from southern germany and because you are and you are also from italian half right your your parents are some of those uh, some of them or their their parents are from italy who is from italy um it's the parents of my father Mm -hmm. And uh, and they, yes, actually, um, since they were Sephardic and they had to also flee, so they went over North Africa back to Paris and from Paris also to Israel. So um, a lot of, you know, migration. And at the same time, uh, the people in southern Germany, they have blue eyes. No, sorry, you have green eyes, but light eyes and dark hair like me because the Romans were there. So it's mm -hmm. it's 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 a lat Latin mix. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, somehow I would maybe like to say in my heart, I'm probably Phoenician, 
uh, those settlers, you know, in the Mediterranean area from mm -hmm. Venice to the Silk Road to sometimes I have all this longing for that area. But I grew up in uh, southern Germany and mm -hmm. my parents are not musicians. And the story is that I heard it when I was four years old on the radio. And the, la the lady I heard play, I was to meet her by coincidence mm -hmm. in Israel when you were competing and you won your glorious prize. I was to meet this lady. She was from Switzerland. I didn't know her. And she heard we spoke the dialect of the southern German area. And she said, oh, please come to my home. And she played for me. She was an elderly Swiss harpist. And I thought, oh, no, not again, Hasselmann, you know, and, and then I suddenly realized, but it's exactly the version. It's exactly that one. Mm -hmm. And it was the version I had heard when I was four years old on the radio, and it was her. <laughs> and probably the reason why I never wanted to listen to the piece was because it was this one in your memory. Mm -hmm. So this lady, Wilhelmine Bucherer, she went to live in Israel, and I met her when you competed in Israel. Because I remember you were there visiting the competition. I remember you there. Yeah, it's so this unbelievable story. So, who was your first teacher? When did you really start? You learned, you, you heard the harp at, when you were four, but you certainly did not. Start. You started when you were six. So, two years you were waiting for it. I was yes, it's the right term. Thank you. It was exactly that. And probably mm -hmm. since my mother was not a musician, she was also not knowing what is ahead of her and trying to maybe the piano or maybe the guitar or the harpsichord. Mm -hmm. And I was a bit naughty and I said, don't you hear that it's not the same thing? And <laughs> then she knew it was serious. So she had to find a harpist and mm -hmm. it was, uh, it's, it's again, it would be another chapter. It was very difficult to find a harp teacher at the time. Mm -hmm. And maybe you remember there were no small harps yet, maybe in early music. Yeah, today that's all so wonderful mm -hmm. and um, so it was Francois Stein in mm -hmm. Winterthur today that's the University of Zurich and uh, she is uh, still a very close mentor and dear friend she's mm -hmm. over 80 and uh, she was many times on my jury in Geneva at the university she would mm -hmm. come mm -hmm. and I realized that she influenced me very much with contemporary music she, as a child, she already played a lot of contemporary music to me. Mm -hmm. And I think um, that influenced me greatly to, mm -hmm. yeah, to just follow that path. And so the very long. first piece, I'm sorry. No, just how long have you been studying with her before you changed the teacher? Six years. Six years. Mm -hmm. And then it continued in Stuttgart at a University of Music with mm -hmm. Therese Reichling, who herself was a student of Zingel. Mm -hmm. and is, let's say, really one of the giants of the German tradition. She was always in Bayreuth, and she would take me sometimes to orchestra masterclasses, you know, to learn the operas mm -hmm. at very young age, and she organized the European Harp Symposium with um, Isabel Perrin and uh, with, um, help me, was it with Skylar Kanga at the time? No, Elena Zaniboni. Mm -hmm. They were very active and that was like our teams, right? Mm -hmm. And um, that's when I got also to know, I would say, the friendships of the harp world, which are there until today. And then only the, uh, the, um, the participation in the World Harp Congress has started. So it was, you know. Step by step. Yeah, step by. So you were in, uh, first you were in uh, Switzerland studying, then you came to, to Stuttgart. And have you been studying uh, where after? Because you, uh, it has been a kind of long way for your study. So tell us a little bit about it. All the way to Bloomington, all the way to Bloomington. <laughs> <laughs> Which unfortunately we missed us there. Um, yes, now just don't forget that of course, Switzerland for us was not Switzerland. It's basically two kilometers over the border. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? And so it, it is a bit um, the same thing. It's the same language, the same dialect. If you want to hear some dialect, we can share that. <laughs> um, what you would say in German, what you would say in, in the Swiss dialect. And then um, it was very early that I had a chance to listen in winter to, to Marielle Nordmann. Mm -hmm. So now we all know she is this incredibly beautiful woman, but also this very sincere grand artist. 
And I think as a child, you probably just felt that. Yeah, it was overwhelming to hear her boil you. I think I, I remember every detail and it was the first time that I heard harp live. Mm -hmm. So she was my first concert. Yeah, I went to, and I, I was a terrible girl. So I must have been seven, almost eight. And I was really taking her, you know, skirt and I said, please, please. And can I, can I maybe play something for you? <laughs> Luckily, um, like for my father, I spoke French and uh, and she, she said, can I like, let me at least go to my dinner. But after that, generous as she was, she agreed to come. And what happened was that she said to me, Florence, c'est trop tôt, il faut attendre. She said, it's too early, you can't play this piece yet. <laughs> I absolutely wanted to play Handel, what was it, Passacaglia to her. And um, she, she, she looked at me with her very generous eyes and she said, c'est juste trop tôt. And however, the link was created there and it was always my dream to study with her. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did so from Freiburg when I was a student after the high school exams. I love to be at school, so I wanted to finish school high school and I was with a Jesuit private school in the middle of the Black Forest and uh, I went from Freiburg and commuted to Paris to study with her. We had also was, Marielle, uh, yeah we had Mariel also as a guest one week ago actually so who had a chance to see her you of course have still the chance to see it on the YouTube as all the interviews are saved there you will of course, understand what we are talking about, about her really personality. She's very special. And certainly as an artist, she's um, very inspiring. So I totally understand. Yeah, I admit that it was the first video I watched. <laughs> <laughs> so and, I, and I must also apologize because um, dear Yara, you have had this idea very early in the year also to save the World Hub Congress for all of us. And uh, we were so extremely busy at RU that it was like a miracle that I heard that there's the Hub channel you have created. So now I enjoy the semesters over at RU and I really enjoy to have more time and to watch all you have already created, including this fabulous logo. <laughs> Yeah. You are so lovely, Florence. That's great. Thank you really very, very much. Thanks a lot. Please, and uh, in in France, in Paris, you stayed with uh, Marielle. How long have you been there? I would like to say from my heart, since the age of six, um, mm -hmm. uh, seven, since I heard her live. Um, I've also lived with her recordings and this incredible sound mm -hmm. um, she has. And... Um, really studying with her on a day-to-day -day basis that was uh, 1994 to 97 mm -hmm. until I got a scholarship for IU and I was in a true conflict. Um, I remember that very strongly. I was in a conflict to ask uh, Madame Nordman if it, is, uh, if it was permissible to go to IU mm -hmm. and maybe you want to hear an answer. So her answer was at a time, so how long is it? Nine months? Oh, that's just the time of a baby. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's <good. laughs> Wonderful. And uh, so she, she let me go. Mm -hmm. And of course, um, I mean, my students know this story. I, I've talked about this also at RU. Um, it, it, it was a complete shock to come from a splendid city like, um, like uh, Paris. And, and, and land in Indianapolis or, or even Chicago at the time. And then you, you got to Bloomington and then uh, it was first, second, third, fourth street. And then you had to turn right and it was always 90 degrees. And I was completely lost. And the island was of course, Miss McDonald's studio with all this tremendous musicianship and the grand class we were at the time. It was a glorious generation. Also yours, I know. But we also, <laughs> and um, we, were, we were many, it was a big class and from so many continents and so many um, different countries. Um, and I, I must say it is a wonderful gift that these friendships exist until today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is, I was always dreaming of, of 
organizing a get together, you know, alumni of that and that year in the, in the Harp studio. Um, it wasn't possible yet, but um, how wonderful that we are all so well connected. And That's that was uh, 97 to 99 for an artist mm -hmm. diploma. Mm -hmm. So only two years. Yes. Only two years. And then you returned back to Europe or how, how was your trip after? Because you became very early to be the professor in, in uh, Geneva. So uh, was it right after you returned from Bloomington as a student or? No, um, there, there are almost five year, uh, six years in between. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, it was a difficult time. I debated very much where mm -hmm. I was also interested to stay in the US. Um, mm -hmm. It was fascinating and uh, uh, it had been very influential to be at IU with our dear teacher, Suzanne McDonald. It has also been very influential to be with George Sheberg, a grand Hungarian pianist, and it was mm -hmm. the mecca of the musical world, yeah, with uh, Maurizio Fuchs and Sheberg and Starke and um, Menachem Pressler and you name them all. It was really a mecca of the musical world. Mm -hmm. And um, however, I uh, decided to compete for another competition, which was in Rome. Um, I don't know if it exists anymore. The Valentino Book competition was only music of the 20th and 21st century. Mm -hmm. And um, I was fortunate to win it. And that led to the debut at the Deutschland Radio Berlin which you also know. And then I decided to move to Berlin and I have ever, I've been there ever since, uh, more 15 years and my three children are born in Berlin. So Berlin became home. Yes. And when you mentioned, you have now three children, you have one, like first were twins, two boys, and now we have four years old girl. So how was the change of your life since uh, the children were born? Because you were teaching in Geneva and then only you got the kids. So, and they were born in Berlin. So how did you manage to travel from Geneva to Berlin? It's not close by. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness. I mean, of course, um, such a question, Diana, can fill an entire interview, right? How do we handle being uh, mothers, parents, Uh, mm -hmm. female artists uh, it, it is it is it would be a lie to say that it is easy um i'm grateful that everything came together um because i think uh, there are enough examples where um, it did not work out or it was not a wish mm -hmm. um, for me i believe it was a wish but again um, somebody like uh, my teacher maria nordman who jungled her three children And she had very practical advice, like she would say, okay, the next morning I would be home. She would only concertize in France. That was for me like a vision, aha, uh -huh. there, there is a way. And I think very honestly, if I had not been a harpist, with the logistics of our incredibly demanding instrument, I would not have been so cool to raise twin children because they're a heritage of my grandma and were a complete surprise. Mm. So only to have the Kinderwagen, which fits through the door, you know, and maybe be on a plane uh, and make sure that they are at least three seats. You need to take planes with three seats because they can't sit alone and <laughs> in one row. Small details like that. I think being a harpist. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's the um, way and you were you were pregnant with the with the third child. You did not have the daughter yet here, right? But this is um, a, a very funny picture with about seven suitcases. The hardest trip ever. We went to Australia, to mm -hmm. Tasmania, where I was invited. Wonderful hub community there, and um, I absolutely wanted to go with the children. But we were facing winter there, and it was summer here. And we went through Bangkok, where it was extremely hot. So I had all these suitcases for these different climates. And here on this picture changing in Bangkok, we are still smiling, my husband and I. <laughs> <laughs> But of course, uh, not all the time. <laughs> But it's so cute. And when we were talking before we went online, uh, I, I just cannot believe that the boys are already eight years old now. And when they were born, I was visiting you in Berlin. And I just feel like it's yesterday, you know, and they are already eight years and your boy, uh, your girl is four now. 
Yeah. That's right. And, and you said beautifully at the time um, when I asked you, you said, oh, I just don't know whether I should unpack the heart first or the baby first. That was your only problem when you were traveling with your baby. And mm -hmm. I thought, wow, this is so great. She takes it so easy. We can do this. <laughs> Absolutely. But the two kids, like the, the, the twins, I really admire because it's not easy. This one is um, good enough. Yeah, you can, you can manage, but it's not easy. Even with one, but with two, it's my goodness. And your parents, they are uh, where they are living. So could they help you with the children or? No, no. Uh, we, we, we didn't have any fam family help on both sides. Mm -hmm. it, it, it wasn't possible. And um, I think it, it's another thought. We women can't do it without the help of other women. I had an army of helpers, of nannies who sometimes traveled with me. Mm -hmm. I think I'm very much a mama. So I, I always wanted to take the children with me when I could mm -hmm. before they enter their own life. Now, you know, the, the young one wants to come along, not necessarily the eight-year-olds, but when they wanted to, I wanted to find ways. And so it was mm -hmm. an army of people who helped, but unfortunately not from our family due to the age. And um, on the paternal side, we are missing the grandmother. She has already passed away a long time ago. And so we, we, we had to, and we are both musicians. So mm -hmm. it's, quite, um, it's quite a logistic. Yes. Of course, I can imagine. And just coming back to your your steps, so you had started to teach at uh, the Genève. It was the first position for the teaching, or did you teach before somewhere? Well, I'd, I'd like to say my apprentice years were in Lithuania. And uh, I'm incredibly proud of my Lithuanian students, of their way they have gone. It was for me to really start and even beyond teaching because we didn't have harps. We didn't have a huge library. We had basically photocopies of everything, but there were these incredibly talented young children. And uh, I remember that the parents even confided their children to me. They would come to Berlin by plane and stay at my home. And I, I don't understand today, how could they have so much confidence? I was just about 25 and could barely cook, you know? <laughs> so I had Agne Kiblite at my home, who then went on to study with you, um, got to know her when she was nine, and Aiste Balionite and Joana Daunite, Felicita. I mean, um, all such an incredible generation. And uh, five, six years into my Lithuanian apprenticeship, Mm -hmm. um, I won the position in Geneva. So some of the Lithuanian students came to follow and others went on and it basically opened the world for the young harpists there. So Geneva started in 2005. Mm -hmm. And before that, I was living this very wild, um, adventurous concert life where you drive and you upload your harp in the night at 4 a.m. and uh, in jeans and you come home and the next day <laughs> you take care of the papers again. You know how it is, right? Um, so that, that feeling I had yesterday again when I was on the highway all alone, <laughs> my 900 kilometers. And I'm also asking myself, how, how does that feel um, I still consider us young or on the halfway, right, of hopefully our lives. And um, how does that feel when you are 60 and, and up? And what's the physical part of loading halves? I mean, again, today, as wonderful as the concert place is, nobody helped me. And mm -hmm. we can do it, but it is, it is a, it's an effort en plus. And... Mm -hmm. um, when I hear of these uh, giant colleagues we have who drive themselves at age 80 and more, I'm in full admiration. Absolutely. It is, uh, and it's true what you are saying, that man, many people don't realize what is behind to play the harp. It's not only that it's a very difficult instrument for playing itself, but that we have to really carry it and that it's not easy. We have some trolleys, we have now the help in this way, but still it's not something like you, you take just the flute in your packet. So it's something we need to, we have to drive, we cannot go by just the, the, the train. We have to go by car if we want to take our own harp and it's not really easy. This is everything behind what only we harpists know. 
<laughs> and I just and say, if, sorry if I can share that with you. Yeah. Um, just a small observation. I really feel and I really think that around the globe, harpists are extremely well organized, mm -hmm. uh, always ahead of their time in how they guide their lives through. Um, what they are jongling, I mean, it's so breathtaking what harpists do mm -hmm. worldwide, what they create and mm -hmm. like a full management job. And I think that is probably has also a bit to do with what we have to do for our instrument and how much we have to think ahead. I find mm -hmm. it absolutely breathtaking. And um, yes, maybe how can I say it's part of our profession. Um, mm -hmm. But Jacques said lately, very beautifully, during the pandemic, he's waiting for all these uh, new creations harpists are bringing up because of the time they had extra. And I must mm -hmm. say, I'm just waiting for this perfect robo, artificial intelligence, which takes utmost care of your harp and just puts it on stage and back in the car. I'm waiting for that. <laughs> <laughs> Someone has to create this. <laughs> Absolutely. Florence, I will just take a little break because we have already, of course, people who are watching us, who are with us. And so I would like to share their their uh, greetings and their hellos from Veronika Lemyshenko. We have uh, also her mother, Anala Lemyshenko. We have uh, also from Italy, our wonderful guest. And we have also Skyla Kanga. So many greetings to everyone as well. And of course, we are so glad that you can spend time with us and that I'm having such a great guest today, our Florence, who really has such a very rich life, even for her little age. And I would like to know, uh, Florence, because you have been always very active in organizations as well. And as I read in your biography, you did also the festivals as an organization. Which festival was the first one you have done? Um, thank you. Yes, the first one was actually in Lithuania. A very grand mentor for me was Donatas Katkus. Um, mm -hmm. Nothing I need to explain to a colleague harpist that he simply said, go, do. Yeah, so which, which repertoire, which concertos do you want to perform? What do you want to stage? How are they interacted? And um, how do they belong together? So at some point he confided me with a part of his already existing festival. Again, these were my apprentice years because the structure was standing. But when I was appointed at the Festival de Musique in Basel, um, that was succeeding Guidon Kremer, it was, of course, Big Steps. And this was entirely dedicated to contemporary music and in very um, contemporary venues, which we had to think how to bring the museum together with their exhibitions and with the repertoire. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's a passion of mine. Mm -hmm. And probably it's also why I studied musicology and philosophy. Um, it is, it's somehow a passion to look behind things and to see how they are interconnected. Mm -hmm. And um, I can't say more than that, and just this is my motto. And of course, it felt fortunate that I could direct festivals. But of course, my real baby was the Elias Parish Elvas um, Foundation of the festival in Tinmouth. Mm -hmm. And I was on the way back from a concert in Cornwall, and I saw this is Tinmouth, and I just went off the train and said, maybe this is the Tinmouth of our parish Elvas. And nobody in the city knew about him. And that's how it started off. And you were there. I remember your wonderful teaching when you came. We had uh, a jubilee in 2008. So it was 200 years since his birth. And unfortunately, I must say, um, it, it, it is very difficult, let's say, between London and Cornwall to do anything mm -hmm. for the arts, just because countries are so different in how they mm -hmm. see the arts and how they support it from an official side. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had to pause it several years, but I mean, he's still born there. And now we have a plaque on the house and everybody's very proud to know that Parish Alvas was that boy who left from Tinmas and went to Italy mm -hmm. and uh, is actually buried three meters from Mozart's grave on the St. Mark Cemetery in Vienna. And that's actually how I got to know about Parish Alvas, not because I knew his music as a child, but because I was looking for Mozart's grave. And then I saw his grave, which says Harp Virtuoso. 
I started to research and then of course, stupid as I was, Madame Nordmann had already recorded all his concerti. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but that was that was the initial. And, uh, wow. And he, and that- as, you, as you know, he was a close friend of Mendelssohn. So of course, tomorrow, poor, poor harpist. He has also to be in my repertoire. I'm playing the Serenade, which is one of his latest pieces. Mm-hmm. Right? A mm-hmm. very mature piece. And how amazing that he knew all these giants of his time. Absolutely. But it's an amazing story that you actually met him through this all, all ex, ex, experiences. So it's really... And does this, this festival in England still exist? Or when you move to United States now, does anybody take care of it? No, I had, I had to pause it even before the US uh, mm-hmm. due to finances. I mean, I'm very hopeful that we can we can pick it up again. At the mm-hmm. moment, everything, of course, we all know in Europe where we are, mm-hmm. but it is also the moment of creation. And it was very beautiful that one of the visitors of the concerts came of the audience and said, I can hear the landscape in his music. Mm-hmm. And the landscape is stunning in Tinworth. It's so beautiful. Um, it is beyond description, like it's over, the, you know, it's a far view over the sea. Um, it's right at the lakes, it's right at the seaside and mm-hmm. uh, very romantic houses. And it, there was a grand theater. It has a bit of an Italian uh, ambiance. And mm-hmm. I think um, it's so connected. His music is so connected with this landscape that you play it differently there. I, I, I feel it. You were there. I don't know what you think. You have seen many beautiful places, but it is a special place. And I hope we can all reunite there. I would love to do it again. Absolutely. I mean, it's already the the feeling that he was born there and that we bring the music over there. I just don't know very much about if he had some children and if there is some relation with with him still like going on. And uh, does somebody, somebody play the harp? Or is, is nobody from his family continuing Parish Alvar's virtuosity? <laughs> yes, I was introduced to a lady on place who believes that she is from his ancestry and mm-hmm. she does look like him. She has the same shape of the face. Now she could, I believe, be too old. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know if she's still alive. Um, mm-hmm. Absolutely, there were children. He was married to Melanie Levy, who was mm-hmm. also his student. And uh, yes, they were children, but he lived in Vienna at the end of his life. And I think he heard his hand um, climbing up Mount Vesuv. So quite, quite a story. Um, <laughs> but um, I, I think apart from his father, he has been the only musician in his life. I would not know if anybody continued the musical life, not like mm-hmm. in the case like Mozart. And by what the way, I would, yeah. Sorry. What a pity. Yeah, when, when someone such a, such a virtuoso like Paganini, know that there are no continuations because yeah so we have also a message from Agne so greetings Agne oh, <laughs> <It's lovely. wonderful. laughs> so lovely to really see all and here also another one also very many greetings to everyone as well and now tell me because you had so many wonderful students and then you were really based in Geneva, and then it has become a big change in your life because you moved first to to israel is it right or you have not moved to israel because you were the director of the israel competition so you did everything from far and it was also not easy right how was this how did you manage because you had children at the time already so how did you manage to to do all this from far um, well, I think it was maybe like a, a first intense online experience. Mm-hmm. And of course, there was a wonderful team on place from uh, HARP colleagues, especially HARP colleagues. And, um, and the organization is very old, as we know. It's a very reputated competition. Um, so the structure was there. Mm-hmm. And of course, all the decisions we took, we took them always in the team. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it was a, a good experience for both sides that somebody came in from outside and at the same time I was very connected to Israel because of Ami Mayani. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is maybe if we have time to speak about him um, is a composer and mentor who uh, was extremely close to my heart. And mm-hmm. uh, I was many times in Israel to work with him on his pieces and premiere his uh, Concerto Symphonique. Mm-hmm. And um, he has been very, very influential to me. Um, because 
he just decided one day I would uh, work on his piece, but I was just still in my early teens and um, I had no idea how difficult this music really was, just that I really loved it. Mm -hmm. And I think today we can say his repertoire he has written for us has really become standard repertoire for uh, our instrument. Absolutely. Extremely important music, uh, such wonderful makamat and Toccata and Naoko Yoshino played them so, so wonderfully. Mm -hmm. And yes, and um, his concerti may be less played, but absolutely worth to study. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I had this crazy idea um, to have Parish Alvas or Mayani as a choice um, in the finals of mm -hmm. the 2012 competition. And I, I was very much criticized for this choice. Um, mm. And I totally can understand uh, the critique. Mm. But again, my idea was based on international competitions like for the violin or the piano, where you have a choice of five concerti. Mm -hmm. yeah, and it shows really the personality. And I think somehow we could see that, the personality who chose mm -hmm. that concerto or that concerto. Mm -hmm. And I really love the experience. Maybe it stays a, a unique experience. Maybe it's not going to be repeated, but mm. um, I enjoyed it very much to do that experiment. And um, yes, uh, Geneva and Ami, Mayani, always... and Ami Mayani, he wrote some piece for you, especially as well. Which piece was it? Which piece was really written for you by him? No, that would be wrong. The, the concerto I premiered in 1998 mm -hmm. uh, with the Heidelberg uh, Philharmonic Orchestra um, was already written, but Zabaleta said this is unplayable. And young man as he was, he put it into his cupboard, was very disappointed and studied architecture. And he was very furious. And mm -hmm. um, he so, sort of said one day to me, I think you should learn this. And of course, you know, giant Ami Mayani, how can you say no? And I mean, honestly, I had no idea what I got into. There were pages, I think I was sitting on three or five measures for eight hours just to find a way to do the jumps and the time and realize all the different intervals. Mm -hmm. Extremely demanding, but feasible. That's the big difference. It is really possible. Mm -hmm. And I found that exciting. It's a bit like Parish Alvars. It's very demanding, but it's possible. Yes. Yeah, maybe in different to mm -hmm. some compositions where it might not be possible. So mm -hmm. I think he, he knew the instrument extremely well and luckily he turned away from architecture and continued composing. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the, the concerto itself um, was dedicated to Mickey Henry at a time, his friends in New York. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he wrote in his biography, his autobiography, that in his heart you he also dedicated it for me. So that is, of course, a great honor. But it's not but, written at the origin. I wasn't born when the piece was written. <laughs> but I just saw once more his picture with you. And um, yeah, and so which piece he wrote especially for you? Did he written some? Did uh, did he write something for you especially afterwards? No, no, no. No, 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 no. He, he also decided, as you may know, at some point to stop composing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, of course, we can speak a little bit about this. Um, I think that Ami Mayani, actually, who has origins in Lithuania, um, was an extremely cultivated man, an intellectual, mm -hmm. uh, while being the most refined musician himself, with an incredible radius of knowledge and uh, interests. Um, he, did, he did build several buildings in Israel. And as you know, Ruth Mayani is a wonderful harpist, his sister <laughs> who has premiered most of his, and also his niece. Um, mm -hmm. So I think he, he was sometimes harsh and critical with us harpists, mm -hmm. um, saying what we should play and, and that we should be much more contemporary. And I think we can all admit that with some exceptions from our students, it's still difficult for our young students' generation to, to just start a new piece, yeah? to just say, I take a piece of our time, whatever the reasons are. Um, and, and he was criticizing that. He said, we, we have to be and we have to expand our technique. We have to remain curious. And he knew that his pieces are difficult. And so he said, you have, got, you have to get to play it. And of course, there are many more composers, 
but he had a point in saying um, we, we, we should remain open for contemporary music. He was also criticizing to some extent um, that we speak of the harp world. Yeah, no other instrument would speak of the world of an instrument. But then there were these incredibly poetic moments. Um, he also believed that it's very difficult that, uh, you know, men and women, they can be a good team when it comes to partnership. And I said, well, look, it's like in Mozart's operas. Um, you have to try every day again. We just mm. don't know. We cannot promise an entire life of making it, but we try every day again. And I still remember today this very soft voice of his when he said, so Mozart said that, if you think so. <laughs> and it was this, it, it was beautiful. Yeah, he, he had he had this, and especially working with him, um, I, I was so afraid when he finally arrived to the rehearsals. And I thought he would put me in pieces. But no, it was the absolute opposite. He said, you do as you think. Mm. That was such an experience for me. You know, you finally work with the composer and I was expecting that he's going to criticize every single note, mm. especially since he is a critical personality. But mm. no, not at all. And I think that's, that's a sign for a grand composer that in the moment of the creation, mm -hmm. he trusts you. Yeah. So that was a great honor, a great experience. That's wonderful. And because you were, you have been working with many composers, who was the other composer who so much inspired you also with his music and who you did work with really very systematically? Um, maybe I, I'd like to say um, it, is, it is a different connection, but Dirk Kurtak um, was a very strong um, experience to work with mm -hmm. and it came out of a difficult moment of my life because I had lost um, Dior Chebuk as a teacher um, he died in 99 mm -hmm. that was the moment I returned from Bloomington and um, he he had been um, how can I say he has been beyond words for me in his importance he has been a pedagogue um, there's probably no comparison He's the pedagogue for me of the last century um, mm -hmm. with wisdom, with a, with a philosophic mind. And mm -hmm. in his festivals or masterclasses, everybody would listen, not just musicians. It was always a lesson of life. Mm -hmm. So I knew that Shepard told me that he had been very good friends with Kurtak. And I signed up for a contemporary music festival in Sombate in Hungary to work with Mr. Kurtak. And in me was a lot of sadness. Um, I'm not even sure I was able to be open for the music, um, but I was, I was trying to understand where Mr. Shepard came from, from Hungary. And um, Mr. Kurtak was uh, already elderly and uh, a complete different approach um, to music. And it had to be exactly as he wanted it. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we were also working on Schumann Lieder with a singer there, and um, he then trusted me to do some of his Yatikok pieces as a transcription for Hop, mm -hmm. and I took them always with me in my concert programs. They are very short, poetic words. Mm -hmm. I would like, I said words, Lieder, if you want. They have um, um, a short form, and in this, a very microscopic view of expression. So it suits wonderfully with Mendelssohn or with Holiger or with anything which is based on text. And he also wrote one piece in Memoriam Shebuk, and he gave it to me on the music stand and see if you can play it on the harp. And we changed one note because he accepted to change one note. So that, that was um, mm -hmm. a, very, a very special work, um, but not the same like with Mr. Mayani, who of course mm -hmm. himself was so much uh, affiliated with the harp throughout his entire mm -hmm. life. Detlef Glanert, who I do not need to introduce, one of the most famous German composers, um, it was a wish that he writes for the harp. So mm -hmm. I was really nagging over many years. And finally it became true for the last World Harp Congress in uh, Hong Kong. And uh, actually there should have been a second version this year and now everything is still on standstill. Mm -hmm. But um, I would say from the... Will you perform next year in Cardiff, the piece? Is it in plan to that you will be performing? 
No, I, I'm so very happy. Cardiff was meant to be a Mozart masterclass, and mm -hmm. um, that's going to be solely Mozart next year in Cardiff. Mm -hmm. um, Mozart has educated me just like my parents, and uh, it's it's um, yeah, it's 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 too banal to say it's a love story, but. Um, it was even extreme for me to teach Mozart the first time online, you know, last month. It mm -hmm. was an extreme experience for me. How, how is that possible? And I wrote in my headline, poor Mozart. Yeah? And then my students said, why do you write poor Mozart? It's, it's okay to do this online. <laughs> um, Mozart, Mozart was my, my first concert fee. I invested into his entire works. Mm -hmm. um, which are standing at home and then later I b bought all his letters and I lived for one month in Venice last year it was my personal wish to be on place in Venice and I went to look where he had lived when he mm -hmm. was 16 because he was there also for one month and um, everything is there yeah the, the figure in the Carnevale di Venezia is Papageno and uh, the contour and Don Giovanni was his landlord who was chasing women so badly that he got mm -hmm. hanged. And that was Mozart's time. He, it was his landlord in his palazzo. Mm -hmm. So this is an ongoing story for me. I'm all the time researching more. My life dream would be to find the cadenzas of our concerto. I'm so sure he wrote them. I'm so sure. But who knows? But maybe it's your <laughs> Find them, who knows? <laughs> we have also now, I will just make a little bit break because we have also from Marisa Robles, who is always so kind to be with us. So many greetings to England, to London, to Marisa, and thank you very much for the message. So, uh, dear, dear Marisa Robles, I admired you from far um, in Spain. We have not met in person, but I have seen you from far. We were in the same country, and that's. Uh, Oh, I don't want to know how long that is ago. <laughs> <laughs> but you certainly will have a chance to meet each other in person. I'm sure it will happen. So I, I really wish so. And also because now we were talking that you were doing the, uh, the competition in Israel. It has been really demanding. And I think that it has been very difficult for everything. Then you, you stopped and then you, you stayed in uh, Genève and then something happens that you won the, uh, the audition for being the professor in Indiana University, which changed totally your life. And you had to move with your whole family over there. When was it and how is the life now for you? Um, yes, I, I wouldn't like to say it has changed my life completely. Mm -hmm. um, I see it as a continuation of this constant research, which seems to be, um, I don't know, some kind of red line in my life and I'm just trying to follow and mm -hmm. um, it's been a great understanding to be in Bloomington now from the other side on the faculty why probably my teachers are as they are and why for example also George Hibbock taught as he did mm -hmm. and of course it's a complete different life mm -hmm. as a student and as a faculty, and um, uh, it was when I departed, it was, of course, with this great nostalgia of we have been there and our community. And um, I was thinking, OK, if Miss McDonald is around and I'm not alone, this is going to be fine. She was the most noble retired emerita. I had to beg her to come for master classes. It was not that she, you know, I, I thought it's also a great um, role model that somebody says, so this is now my time of retirement. And she was not that eager to come all the time. <laughs> um, but uh, she, she gave every semester a masterclass to the half department, to our mm -hmm. studios. Mm -hmm. And uh, as it's just overwhelmingly impressive as she is. Mm -hmm. And um, the change... <laughs> I think it, it, was, it was not that big, but I was worried for my children mm. yeah, because I was going to deroute them and they would be um, starting school on a different continent and not in their hometown. What would that mean to them? And Fleur, my youngest, was just about a year and some months. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that, that was a grand decision. 
Um, but it had also to do with the whole life setting. Um, my husband of your list was teaching in Leipzig and I was teaching in Geneva. And with three children who are very young, how do you organize that? And um, in Europe, it's very difficult to be appointed at the same university. So we were hoping that being parents um, and being in one place would help us to be both, yeah, to remain musicians and mm -hmm. raise children. And of course, Bloomington has a very stimulating um, atmosphere and uh, surrounding and setting. Um, this turned out not to be true. Um, mm -hmm. I think we have been, <laughs> we feel it the lousiest parents ever because it is so extremely busy that you can't really take care. And people who know me, they know that I'm much as much hands-on with my students like as with my children. So that, that was really a struggle um, to, to see that life balance, as they say it with modern words, um, is a complete different outlook in the US than it is in Europe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I mean, the dream country, of course, is Italy. Yeah, everybody takes your child and you can rehearse and you can eat. Um, that was um, that was a tough wake up. And um, also that maybe it's much more natural in Europe that uh, a teacher has children who live with the class. My children have always known all my students. Mm -hmm. And actually there's a very close connection, not necessarily because they did babysitting work for me, I try to avoid that, but because it's one life. I don't believe in the separation of profession mm -hmm. and family. I think it is one life. Mm -hmm. And um, luckily, it's always how I was able to carry it. Um, but that was not possible in Bloomington. And also not for my other faculty colleagues. Um, from other schools, we talked openly about that. If you had young children, um, it was a race of at 10, 10, you are there, 10, 15, you are there, 10, 17, you have, you know, and of course, everything by car, because it's not uh, an urban sitting setting. So if you only forget one milk, you have to pack three children again and you go again. Um, that is for the generation who has children and young children, I think they know what I'm speaking of. So that has been quite a navigation. Um, my students, absolutely wonderful. And I think there came a point, they also wanted to know more about this. Yeah, they had a teacher with three young children and I came in as a, of course, European woman who knew of Bloomington at a time, um, but uh, who, who lived things differently. Mm -hmm. And I remember his very first shock when I said, um, has to be urtext, urtext, urtext. <laughs> and, and I was so shocked when, when uh, that student at the time said to me, but why urtext, much more expensive. <laughs> and, uh, so, so, you know, it is, it's one thing to be cosmopolitan, but it was also for me to recognize how much European I am mm -hmm. and how much that is all natural for us to always have urtext, right? Mm -hmm. And then some editions, they don't even exist there. I mean, the library is the most fantastic one we can uh, dream of in Bloomington. So I took all my students and said, okay, let's have a tour. Please get to know all the schools we have in this fabulous library. And it was apparently the first tour ever. Yeah, the director of the, the mm -hmm. tour gave, um, of the library gave us a tour and so, um, so I did lots of crazy things, which were a little bit um, outside of the basket. My hero uh, is Jonathan Scholl um, in the program office who, you know, you always had to send the program of your students to approve it so that it goes into print. Mm -hmm. And then he would come back to me and say, what did the student write here? This edition does not exist. This um, Toccata by Paradisi, it's not a Toccata. It comes out of the suite number five, C minor, da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. And I was so impressed by his knowledge mm -hmm. to prove me wrong as a harpist that I don't even know from which movement and suite that is and the kind of edition sometimes we have. And I, I invited him immediately. And I said, please explain to us how you write a program so mm -hmm. that it has a musicologic, you know, improvement. 
And <laughs> it was hilarious. It was hilarious and, and it was such a success. We just realized um, how much precision we are still missing, you know, mm -hmm. especially in our editions. And I don't mean this to criticize, but just because, of course, there's a turnover with other instruments, it already happened. Mm -hmm. So maybe for us harpists, it's also important to, to do that even more, those wonderful autograph editions. It's such a enrichment to see what a composer really meant, or even to look at the handwriting. It's all online today. So the first, the first semester was a bit rough, as you can imagine. <laughs> I can imagine. We have also here a wonderful comment that it's very nice to hear all this work-life balance and so that you can read it. There are a lot of difficulties, things that a musician has to face that you cannot learn in, in a conservatory. So thank you very much for this comment. And we have also a nice message from my Fukui. So greetings everybody and thank you so much. <laughs> I can imagine it is really uh, it must be very difficult, but it is always it comes always with the new position, with the new person who always brings something what maybe it was not a normal and basic things there, but it is the way how it should be also, you know. So and how now it is three years or how long have you been there now? Well, I I, I mean this is another chapter just almost um, too much for an interview like today but it was actually really a nightmare to get to Bloomington um, because of the visa and um, we have no idea how much restrictions there are to get the right visa for somebody who is non-US mm -hmm. and I must say how brave they were to take a non-American um, if I see today all the restrictions included so um, I competed for the position really out of curiosity. You know, I have been almost 15 years in Geneva and I thought, okay, as Miss McDonald would say, it's a good brush up, you just prepare, you know, you, you see where it takes you to. I had no expectation of whatsoever. Um, it was wonderful to go to the finals to Bloomington to play in Ford Hall and, um, of course, being very nervous. And uh, the questions were wonderful. They asked the students. The student who asked for me the most important question became um, it's Melanie Meschner, such an incredible young artist. Uh, in the years we worked together, such a blessing. Um, she had studied with uh, Miss McDonald before, and so I also inherited some of her students. Um, but the the, the timing was extremely difficult for IU as much as for me. Mm -hmm. At IU, because um, the retirement was not planned in a way that the students would know which teacher they have. So Elizabeth Haining came to teach in the meantime. Mm -hmm. And um, when it was clear who was going to be the next teacher, um, my visa didn't fall in place. I was sitting on packed suitcases for about 10 weeks with three children in Berlin. My apartment was packed and already shipped. Um, my husband had already gone ahead and I could not enter the country. So wow. that involved, I was, not, I was not able to choose a home. If you are not holding your visa, you cannot enter the US. I had to take a home over the phone, over, you know, Skype. Um, and then, we finally, when we finally um, knew that the visa was going to work out, they got lost in the mail because the American embassy sent all the four passports one by one. So three of them got lost and they got into the sending order to Switzerland, to Bloomington, which was, was already in place. So a brave postman, it's, it's a story for a movie, uh, mm -hmm. picked out two, two passports in the mail in Switzerland and I was sitting at the border control at the airport trying to get, um, I had no passports, right? Um, with my children to fly to Geneva and to try to get those visa back. And finally, we could depart on the 15th of October. And it didn't end that. The drama didn't end there, Jana. We, um, I found myself in Canada denied um, 
getting to the other side and flying on to the US because they couldn't find my luggage on their screen. My and friend. it was, and this for four days, deboarded, boarded, deboarded, boarded. And I think it was a moment where probably many of my colleagues, I'm not speaking of harpists, they would have turned back. Hmm. Um, it was an incredibly, I don't know, I don't, I don't even know how to put that into words. And I finally took a driver, I rent a driver from uh, Toronto to get to Bloomington in the night with a 12 hours drive. Um, and I remember I called Miss McDonald and I said, what do you think? Should I go with a driver? I don't know. Just use his number in case I get lost. And she said, okay, does he have a website? He has a website? Okay, you go. <laughs> My and then goodness. I arrived on, on a Tuesday night in Bloomington. It was ice cold. I opened for the first time the supposed home to be. And on Wednesday morning, I had to go to the first master class. You remember, it was always on Wednesdays. And that's how it all started. So the poor students, they had not only to wait for me, but they had had so many teachers. And it was, of course, not a smooth yeah, overhanding. And I think especially now, um, uh, it's ex extremely difficult um, for a university of the size like Bloomington mm -hmm. to handle such a pandemic. And um, it's been a, how can I say, it, it's not, challenge is not the right word, but mm -hmm. it, it has been um, so important more than ever to take care of students because they were isolated in their homes mm. and they are not from the city of Bloomington. They are come from Seattle. They come from North mm. Carolina. They, they mm. are hours, you know, it's a huge country. Mm. They're hours and miles away from their homes and suddenly mm. they had to deal with a pandemic like this and no harp. We couldn't take the harps out of the school and not everybody had a private harp. So this isolation, I think it demanded a lot from everyone. And we went very quickly online. And of course, very everybody was very worried. And it's been the, the, the busiest time ever, only an overflow of emails, how to handle that, how to take care, how to do the degrees. We were in the full semester. Mm -hmm. But I think it was very wise to evacuate a campus of 55,000 students. It was very wise to do so. Of course. So because of what, how does it look like now? Because you moved now to Europe, but is it uh, some kind of um, a timing when they would like to open the school? Or because I just learned that Metropolitan Opera is closed until the beginning of next year, the Carnegie Hall as well. So does it look the, with the schools the same, so that the schools are really closed for so long that you have no idea when it will be open? Well, they're not, they're not closed, but it's online. Um, mm -hmm. IU is trying to have a three weeks opening in person and then go back to online teaching and they will do a mix uh, mm -hmm. because some students have, you know, they have extended their rents on place, mm -hmm. but it is, I would like to say in majority, it's online. Um, it's, the major difference to Europe was that the tracking didn't happen very early. Mm -hmm and that the, the way of handling the pandemic has been very much on the shoulders of, of the doctors. And um, I think because of that, it's just at this point much more difficult to, to handle the situation in a, in a safe way. So mm -hmm. many of my colleagues immediately left who are from Europe um, when it was clear that it's going to be online for the rest of the semester. And um, I didn't. Um, but I had again the visa problem that it's not at the moment because of the government in the US, no visa can be extended in time. And I cannot take the risk with my family to be without health insurance and uh, a visa, visa which is not extended in time in another country. So it was a very difficult decision and it was actually quite dramatic to fly your family out under such circumstances, packed to the nose in plastic and everything. The plane was not that empty. Um, but 
luckily everybody's safe and we were in quarantine also that a very difficult experience and uh, yeah also some of my students had to do the same and they either were blocked in the US or they could not return um, one student had studied with me also in Krakow after IU and her harp and her belongings were there but she couldn't enter Poland anymore so um, my colleague now shipped her harp I mean these are really you need you need nerves like steel and mm -hmm. i think i would like to say harpists we have it yeah we have those mm -hmm. nerves like steel mm -hmm. and of course so much happened in very short time the harp column had such incredible ideas to keep us uplifted um and uh, i think it was a time where we realized we we, we need to we need to get together Mm. And I tried to, um, instead of the masterclass on Wednesdays, I opened the circle to international guests. So every time we would have a surprise guest on Zoom, we started calling Bloomington Zoomington. <laughs> and, um, and we um, had uh, a harpist uh, from Venice, Francesca Tondelli, from the middle of Venice, in the middle of the pandemic. And she had this incredible humor. She said, you know, whether we have the mask here or here, it doesn't matter. Yeah, she, she really kept us going when it just started in the US. Mm -hmm. And we, we were heartbroken every day to read the news in Italy. Um, mm -hmm. Then another time I had an IT specialist on artificial in, uh, intelligence um, whom I wanted to ask questions and my studio. Um, so how do we have to see our future? Yeah, he is making the laws for automotive cars. Uh, what does it mean when a car which has no driver um, drops a person over and he has of course a complete different insight into what's coming for us um so every time we had we had a new guest and um more and more harpists and also my former students and i i thought why didn't i have this idea before mm. to to unite you know so it it was absolutely wonderful um clemence in Br brazil and agne in paris and everybody shared what they are doing new some were gardening and others started mm -hmm. cooking and um it, it 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 felt all very close and very much together and i mostly felt that the, it was most important to support the students, which were not students anymore, we were all in the same boat. All our mm -hmm. concerts were cancelled. We It was basic democracy for everyone. But I felt the most important was to get us out of isolation mm -hmm. and to realize, I still had my family, I still had my children to hug, but to realize what it means mm -hmm. right, when you're all alone. And I think we who have this responsibility as faculty and as teachers, um, I think we know how hard that moment was. Absolutely. And it still is in the US. Still is. I, I think IU is facing uh, a difficult time with cutoffs and uh, a way to navigate. I mean, they have seven orchestras. How is this going to work, right? It's, it's the soul of the school to have so many orchestras. And yeah, yeah. how is this going to work? So it, it needs strong leadership, for sure, yeah. and a vision. And yeah. I think. Um, for all of us that we remain open for technology. But of course, it's very satisfying to see that technology cannot replace us musicians. It's, it's, it's just not at the level of, um, Human. of yeah. sound quality. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, very bright. We have greetings from Anna Verkohanseva from Vienna. Thank you very much, Anna. Right. Greetings to you as well. And we have here a question, but I think that we have you have answered already from Veronika Lemyshenko. What about the students who didn't have their own private harp? So if they could have borrowed the harp from the Indian University, you said that it was not possible. So how was actually the when you were teaching online and they did not have the harp, you could not have taught them? No, I could not. Um, no, no, it took a bit of time. We, we tried very quickly to organize that. It was not easy because they are the property of the university and there are all mm -hmm. kinds of policies you need to res respect. So it couldn't be a fast decision. But Michelle Abbott, who um, is the director of uh, Vanderbilt, she mm -hmm. stepped in and very quickly put hubs at the disposition mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. for students 
um, at, at a very low uh, rental fee price. And then there was a fund at RU campus for students to, to ask for support, mm -hmm. financial support. Mm -hmm. But I do know of students who for a very long time had no hands on instrument. And I think that's especially heartbreaking mm -hmm. because that's, that's all you have left, right? And sure. yeah. yeah. Oh my, Florence, it's uh, so many things I would like to still know, but I know that you said that you have not enough time and I don't want to lose the opportunity. If we can go through the pictures, uh, because we have plenty of the pictures now. So if you are so kind, just let me go through. And of course, if there is more time, I would like to know more. And we can, of course, talk about how, because that's what I want to say, because uh, when I read your biography, it says that you are starting now uh, to teach in Zurich. Is it just a um, kind of part of teaching now and then you will return to US or you will keep both or how do you want to manage this? Um, the university in Zurich is a, actually, it's one of the first universities who does and offer um, online teaching. Mm -hmm for a complete curriculum. You can do your entire studies. Okay. Now, they are very much, of course, they are very much up to date now, but it started off in a different idea. The Kaleidos University was founded for students who are already with one foot in their professional life and they don't want to move in the place of studies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's say they're in Hong Kong, they want to stay there and they want to take lessons with you. And uh, that's how it started. But now, at the moment, of course, they are the only ones established to offer everything online. So for us, it doesn't change. The teaching is online. It is, um, of course, not yet a technology we need as musicians so that mm -hmm. the quality um, is at our level. I'm trying to, or I think maybe I have developed a way of teaching online which has a different focus. It's, I would like to say it's to see what I hear or what I need to hear. Mm -hmm. yeah, and maybe our instrument is good for that because it's so visual. Our, mm -hmm. We can see the hands and basically that we really try to see the thoughts of our minds in our hands, mm -hmm. yeah, that in of our mind. And I think that is something I try to develop with my students in this uh, online frustrations. Um, and I, I I had I had three children at home who made a lot of noise, who didn't have school anymore, no more kindergarten. It was it, it, it was a nightmare, to be honest. And I called it, and then I one day I had this idea to go into my car and teach in the car. And I called it the hard drive-in. So that's how we finally made it. <laughs> oh, funny, because we have also picture when we don't go to this because there is also a picture about that that you are really in the car i was just thinking when i was uploading this picture i said like is it really in the car or is it just like that i see it like that so it is exactly <laughs> the example of that <laughs> oh, lovely so because yes. now i i can just go through but i have here the picture which you sent me now recently as there is you as a little one it's you playing the harp how old have you been there on the on the right on the picture um about seven or eight uh -huh. it was an old Wurlitzer harp uh -huh. um yes it was my first harp i was um, allowed to work on it was rent and it's a really inside a wonderful sound. I remember that. Yes. And then uh, the other picture was the pyramid in Giza. That oh. was my very first concert invitation outside of Germany. I think I was 17. And um, the harp which was put there, I think it's still the same harp. And suddenly the wind started blowing into the instrument with a sound I have never heard again. It was really the wind between the pyramids. Maybe Kiops personally. <laughs> yes. And then uh, on the right side, that is Belém in Brazil. Mm -hmm. An incredibly beautiful travel um, at the very north uh, in the Estado do Pará um, to Brazil, the first concert travel. Yes, in the incredibly beautiful concert hall. And when I came out of the hall, I saw that Nicanor Sabaleta also played there. And I thought, wow, how he, did he even get there with a harp at the time, you know, 50 years earlier. Yeah. And then um, on the top, that's not a harp, it's a cat. <laughs> <laughs> a little, little forums. <laughs> yes. 
So I will come back to the beginning. I have pictures which uh, I already showed during the interview with Maria Norman because we were all together at the competition. It was when you were the director. So it's the jury, you are the second one from the left. And here is the same, you are also the second one from the left. So it is, and now I just come to the pictures you have sent me. This is in Bloomington, right? This is the sky, how does it look in Bloomington? Yeah. It's incredible, I know. I thought, but I wanted to share this with you because so many of us, and maybe also those who listen, we have been to Bloomington. But what struck me most, apart from the studio we know and we love, and the hallways and the smell, um, it's also the sky. It's mm -hmm. unbelievable, the stars in the night. And I made many, many pictures just of the sky. And I thought I wanted to share that. Maybe it reminds you of something. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. And here's, of course, your beautiful picture. This is gorgeous one. And here, this picture I showed already when you are traveling with your two boys, twins. I think that maybe if I am wrong, you were pregnant at that picture with your little one, with the girl, or not yet. Oh. No, don't don't give me more pregnancies than there were. But I was pregnant in Israel. On the on the pictures you showed of the Israel Harp contest, oh. I was nine. I was nine months pregnant with Fleur, and I took on the very last day. I was allowed to fly. I and I had to go before the finals. You remember that? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I took the last plane out of Israel. Um, because I didn't have the courage to risk a birth in Israel. <laughs> Here we are also together. It was in St. Petersburg at the competition. And with Maria Luisa Ryan, who is going to be also our guest of the meeting, the stars. And here it's you as a pregnant. It was with your twins or it was with uh, with your girl? Yeah, it was Parish Alvas concerto with the twins. <laughs> <laughs> it's unbelievable. How it, long it did felt it like? How long have like you been with, with the I'm twins? Sorry. Until until what ta uh, what time before the birth have you been playing? I cannot remember, but you were much worse than me. Can I recall this story, dear Jana? <laughs> you called me one day. You called me one day and you said, Florence, there are just some concerts in Italy, and um, I'm not sure I can play. And I thought, why? What? What? What's wrong? And then she said, Well, you know. Um, Jana, she said to me on the phone, ah, oh, you know, I'm pregnant and I don't know, it's quite close to birth. And in case I can't play them, and actually the repertoire is this, 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 this. And, <laughs> and I must admit that I had not played all of that. And it was like two weeks from there. And I said, okay. Um, and so how far are you in your pregnancy? And you said, yeah, it's two more weeks. And <laughs> I said, and I said to you, I remember that, um, I, I said on my mind, she's going to play it. I just say yes, so that she's calm. <laughs> and you did play them. <laughs> it was amazing. I was replaying up to the very last moment. That's very true. Absolutely. <laughs> but I had only one child. I, I mean, I was pregnant only with one child, not with twins, you know. So it is. it was possible. With both children, I was playing really until the last moment. And started actually right away after as well. Yeah. It was, yeah. But we can do it. We can do it. Everything is possible. <laughs> Here you are a teacher. That's so wonderful picture also. Where was it? Oh, thank you. This is in Krakow uh -huh. with my student Adrian Novak, a very talented young Polish harpist. Yeah. And uh, we are, of course, working here on, you will guess it, Mozart. Mm -hmm. And maybe um, the harpists around the globe are curious to know that the manuscript of our harp concerto of Mozart, Köchelverzeichnis 299, is in Krakow. The autograph is in mm -hmm. Krakow. Wow, wonderful. This is also a beautiful picture of yours. It's gorgeous. Yeah, thank you. That's also in Krakow. It's in a, in a hidden uh, mm -hmm. backstage uh, um, concert place, which is now part of a hotel. And one morning mm -hmm. I discovered it and I thought I, I make just the pictures for Bloomington. So. Gorgeous, gorgeous. And this is also in Krakow or where is it this? Uh, this is nice that you're showing this to the very left is Francois Stein. 
And mm -hmm. this is uh, the very last jury uh, in Geneva before I would depart. And on the right side is Eva Kaufungen. Eva Kaufungen, mm -hmm. uh, the former uh, um, harpist of the Tonhalle Zurich. Mm -hmm. And uh, so on the left is my very first teacher. Wonderful. And here it is in Bloomington or was it, where is this? Yeah, this is the famous Urtex tour through the library. <laughs> <laughs> so in the very, very first days after arrival, and there are some of my students and also some of them who have graduated yet uh, already. Mm -hmm. And uh, the second lady to the right is Misty Shaw, the goddess of the library. So she is, um, she is the lucky one who has got all those books and scores. Wow. And here is a picture. If you don't know, oh, yeah. it's also from, <laughs> from St. Petersburg, which I found. So it's really nice memory. And here's yeah, another one. Nice. It's also with Agne there oh. and with, with Tatiana from Italy as well. Yes. Oh, oh, I remember her. Yes. Oh, wonderful. Oh, here's also with great. Anna Matarova. Yeah. yeah. That was a happy time in St. Petersburg together. Absolutely. I think Jana, when we had a chance to meet, we would always go and eat very well, right? <laughs> Remember in Brazil, when we went to eat one sushi after another, and at the same time, it was it was such a the festival itself. It had something like an announcement of something difficult to come, and that's when we lost Cherenne Cipolu. Right? We were in that festival. Marielle Nordman was with us, Indeed. many, many more, mm -hmm. and. Two weeks later, our life was upside down. It was the first time that one of us did not get home. I know. I think it was the greatest shock of my life. Yeah, yeah. We were already, maybe, yeah, with Sharon, who was also the uh, the guest on Saturday, we were talking about it. It was really tragic. It was very tragic. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, I think it's very beautiful that today there is now a festival in Istanbul for uh, Cheren and it's been founded by her sister mm -hmm. and she gave me the honor to say whether I wanted to come for the first edition so um, actually in January we were still all together mm -hmm. and we, we almost cannot believe it now Maria Nordman came um, mm -hmm. as the president of the jury and um, and um, Ije Yavash from Turkey who was mm -hmm. one of my former students, is, did a brilliant, brilliant festival with lots of young people. And we also had a chamber music competition with or without help, with lots mm -hmm. of candidates. Um, and it was my personal happiness to see that there were three generations. So there was my teacher in a jury and my student on the jury, and she had her students play on stage. And that's the moment I thought, wow, now I really became old. <laughs> oh, come on. No, not at all. <laughs> not at all. No <laughs> <More> generations. <laughs> I do want to say, show also here that you are doing the education concerts for the children. It's mainly, I, I don't know if you do it also in the US, but I know that you and I did, and many other harpies did it in Germany as well, as I do it also in Czech. But this, I think it's from the Rhapsody of schools. I think it's the picture from there. Do you do some of the education concert for the children still, or how does it? It's work? amazing that you found this picture. Um, yeah, I, I think it's a wonderful idea um, they are doing. And at the moment at IU, they are thinking about exactly doing that and going out into smaller communities to reach out to children. Mm -hmm. I mean, how do we want to have audience in our concert halls if we don't take care of the next generation? Right? Absolutely. And it's, it's also not right to criticize, as we say in German, die Silberwelle, those who have gray hair. That's very unfair because luckily mm -hmm. there is this generation who has all this culture. But I, I think you can see it in the U.S. very much that you have the music in big centers, but it's very difficult to have a concert in a smaller place. And when like, somebody like Rubinstein would go and travel to the US, he mm. would give 30 concerts in a row anywhere in smallest places. And this concentration on big places and big halls with a lot of seating, that's of course very impressive. But we understand right now that it's a huge chance for small places. It's a huge chance for chamber music. It's a huge chance for small symphonic works, 
Yeah, mm -hmm. maybe chamber symphonies of Schreker, of Shostakovich, small versions, um, mm -hmm. until we are through this pandemic. And I personally was always very critical to the concentration of mass, yeah, mm -hmm. the, the concert with 3,000 people in a hall. Why? I mean, what makes you happier if you mm -hmm. play twice or three times? Or mm -hmm. if you <laughs> get more paid in one time? Yeah, for whom is that more happiness? For the organizer or for the artist? Mm -hmm. And I think it's, it's a chance right now. Right? So at IU, they are thinking to do these community concerts, mm -hmm. which we have since a long time in Berlin and in Germany, which you also have done. And basically every great musician of the young generation is participating and for free. It's for free. And then these people come and children come into the concert. That's the concept. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. We have a message from Sionet Williams from, from uh, England. So greetings to her also, Sionet. It's nice to see you here. To continue, I, I just don't want watch your watch your time because I don't want that you will be surprised that it's it flies so fast and I'm so happy to be with you. And I just want to really go through all the pictures which I have here prepared for for the public, if you remember, this is also from St. Petersburg with really, uh, of course, very famous um, cellist Knyazev and also uh, other really famous um, musicians there. And we have here also this one is with the composer. I unfortunately don't remember the name, but he was, I think it was a composition which was required for the for the program, if you maybe remember, but I don't. I do not remember, no. Mm -mm. And here's oh. you, the pregnant one. <laughs> you maybe don't can show, don't show so many, don't show so many pregnant pictures. Otherwise this is so cute. It's so cute. It's so cute. <laughs> maybe you can say more about those pictures because, of course, I found them, but I cannot explain what is it. So maybe if you if you can say who is on the picture, it will be lovely. You are challenging me. Uh... I think, is it one of our colleagues from Turkey? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but of course, I will think about it. I will, yeah. I will write you later. I will find out for sure. But it, mm -hmm. it, it, it was, um, I, I must say, and please, young generation, don't repeat that. I, I think we also do crazy things which do not need to be repeated. I, I had so much on my mindset that I wanted to play in Canada at the World Hub Congress in Vancouver. Sorry. Vancouver and um, and I was much too much pregnant it was eight months and the plane was of course um, very hard to get through and it was very hard to be on place but I absolutely wanted to do this and then give this lecture and play and I remember that I have no memory of that plane just because it was too exhausting for the body mm -hmm. so please it's not a good idea to do that <laughs> luckily it went well <laughs> Here we have a picture with Willy, right? It's his name. He's a, from the Linen Healy, the technician. Here is with uh, Dornik. Uh, what is her name, first name? I remember, of course, she's a student of uh, Isabel Moretti now in, in Paris. Nadia. Where Nadia. Was this? Nadia. Nadia. Yes, where was this? Jana, where did you find that? On the internet. I just was searching for your pictures. <laughs> so I found all those pictures, like here you are probably teaching in Hong Kong. I think it has been in Hong Kong or somewhere. And this is uh, also, of course, a beautiful pic uh, picture with the, uh, with the great student. Wu Jin, Wu Jin, you are such a wonderful talent. Yeah. She's amazing. I, I... Yeah, what a musician. I heard her with a small ditzy etude in Bangkok the first time. I think she was just 12. I thought, how is it possible to play ditzy so beautifully? And I mean, her way is so promising since. Absolutely. Absolutely. She's really, really an um, amazing, amazing artist. She's really artist. So, you. yeah, it's okay. It is not, yeah, yeah, I remember <laughs> immediately. And here we have uh wait a minute i've lost myself here it's also with yanis she's also a great talent from korea South korea oh my goodness 
oh my goodness, so there is already a picture with Yanis. Oh, wow, I don't even have that. And we are working together and what a musician, this young lady. Oh, this is so nice that you found this picture. Thank you. <laughs> And this picture, I must say, it is absolutely amazing. I just, was, when I found it, I could not believe it is really uh, a star. It's a really amazing picture. You have great, great photographer as well to make these pictures. But of course, you are the real but, model. But can I, can I explain the story behind this picture? Absolutely. Um, maybe you remember there was a black and white series for quite a number of colleagues. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's Jacques Francois, who is such an artist, uh, that he said he wanted to have pictures of some harpists, but not with the harp. Mm -hmm. It was such a challenge. So we all traveled to Paris to this amazing photo studio of Arcourt, which is a legacy. Mm -hmm. uh, they, 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 mm -hmm. they did all the Hollywood divas and, um, and, 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 and the great thinkers and, you know, Humphrey Bogart and da-da-da. And so we, we, we went into the studio um, and we got, we got this session as a gift. <laughs> and I mean, you just realized that it, it's a different world. Yeah. If you want to be professional for pictures, it's a complete different thing. Don't just do it as a selfie for some minutes. This is, it had five people just doing the makeup and this. So of course it's not, I'm not mm. like this in natura. I'm not like this in natural. <laughs> Yeah, beautiful. The nature is awful, of course, very beautiful. Here it's you at the con you. concert in concert hall, recital hall in Bloomington, right? It was last year, probably. Ah, uh, was yeah, could be. This could be the recital hall. Yes, there could be the concert from the second of November in Bloomington. Uh, wow. The most, the most disastrous concert of my entire life. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Yes, because, um, well, it seems to be a light motif. So um, I got stuck in Canada and mm -hmm. the apartment was not delivered. And this concert was set as a benefit recital for the USA hop competition. And it was on the 2nd of November and I had arrived the week before, but the apartment was not there and my music was not there and my shoes and my dress and, you know, and the harp was not there. The harp was stuck in the customs. So the harp mm -hmm. came out the night before the concert. Michelle Abbott, she fought it out of customs. And it was a learning lesson for me. Mm -hmm. I um, recommended to my students that there are some very rare moments in your life as an artist where you have to say no. And this was a moment which I did not accept for myself as a no. I thought, mm -hmm. you know, our responsibility, we have to do it and so on. But sometimes, and it happens rarely, of course, there is a moment you are at the edge of your capacities. And it is maybe not possible to walk on stage. And so for me, that was the most disastrous. <laughs> I, I just know that um, I started improvising in Scarlatti. I just knew, okay, I have to be in B major. So I started improvising. And maybe the good thing which came out of it is that later I had a lot of fun to really go very closely into Baroque music. Um, so I was many times driving through Bloomington and, and seeing these modern buildings and this architecture, which is so different from what we know and cozy and uh, mm. European. And I went backwards in the repertoire. Yeah, I listened to more and more Baroque and early Baroque and Renaissance music and started to do the inscriptions and mm -hmm. pieces of 1500. And I was falling in love with that sound on the bass notes. And um, I talked to harp makers and said, how can we have that kind of sound of, of early music harps on the concert grand? Because it's so, my God, it's so central. It's so, mm -hmm. <gasps> yeah. And um I think maybe that was the that was the starting point at concert. Mm -hmm. I, I had to improvise. My mind was exhausted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It can happen. It can happen. We all can go through this, and that's yeah. that's normal. But hopefully that's only once. Hopefully only once. <laughs> but we are human beings, so that's that's the we are fragile people. So we cannot. We are strong, but at the same time we are fragile. So we cannot. Uh, we can go over the limit we we can achieve so that's sometimes very difficult so and here it's gorgeous picture also which i just found when you were talking 
<laughs> oh, this is wonderful. Uh, this lady is the cultural attaché of the Embassy of Malta, uh, mm -hmm. where I gave a concert last summer. And um, she she's very expressive. And somebody took that moment when she explained to me that she liked something in the pieces of uh, Maltese composer Albert Pace. Mm -hmm. And it looks like she is showing me her <laughs> finger. And we were so much laughing about it. Actually, I, right. I have not even realized. <laughs> I did not realize that her gesture. But here is a great title of the harp column. And with the picture, actually, which we have seen before. And uh, it's just a now recent, no? Or when, when was this issue it, when it came out? Do you remember? It is a year ago? Yeah, it was, uh, no, a harp column made this as a gift to me right after arrival. And uh, um, really absolutely wonderful how Alison sat down with me. She came all the way to Bloomington. I appreciated, appreciated her questions very much because as you, she, she was really going into my childhood. And mm -hmm. many of these questions made me think, yeah, what I maybe have not thought about before, have not thought about uh, what does it mean, the landscape you come from? What does it mean, um, the sunshine you have every day and the stability of the climate? Um, mm -hmm. and, and, and so it was a very comprehensive interview um, where I thought, okay, now I can rest for many years, it said. <laughs> But now you ask me again to come, so thank you so much. <laughs> and maybe something she, um, or I would like to, to point out through that interview with Harp Column, um, it's, it's, it's something I realized since, and I don't know if you remember that from Bloomington. Bloomington has something incredible. Every two hours about the climate changes, mm -hmm. the temperature changes. It can go from zero to 20 it can go from snow to sunshine and i was discussing this with my students how much has stability of climate and temperature an influence on the arts mm -hmm. i remember this trip we went to chicago to choose a new harp and inside the car it was normal and it looked beautiful outside and the sunset and then i had to take gas and i got out of the car and it was extreme wind but i couldn't see it before it was incredibly impossible to stay outside mm -hmm. and i realized that somehow modern technology calls you to stay inside yeah mm -hmm. the lockdown calls you even this whole terminology of language zoom bombing mm -hmm. and lockdown and um, social distancing social distancing is a terrible word what is it mm -hmm. social or distancing yeah. <laughs> and and I think um, these observations of climate, which were more possible in Bloomington than here, made me think maybe Europe as a culture is also a phenomenon of temperature, of climate, of a steady climate, where a composer knew um, Mozart's song about the Mai, yeah, Komm lieber Mai und Mache, and then comes the winter and the Winterreise and so on. So, what does that do with us when we are on a different continent playing composers who are not of that climatic surrounding? And teaching in Bloomington, let's say, Spanish music, and then in the next hour, Italian music, and then German music, that was completely different than doing that in Geneva. Mm -hmm. In Geneva, it was next door. Right, whether it's Italian or Spanish, it's all the same passport. You know what I mean. But I understood that there's such a big difference in stylistic. Mm. And mm. I think I would not have understood that in my Genevan years. Mm. So I wonder how much um, artificial intelligence is actually influenced by climate. And because it makes you perfectly stay at home. And I would like to urge us to, to go out again, because we cannot replace the communication with other human beings um, through a screen. We just cannot. I mean, we can find a way to translate it and mediate it into something new. And we also know other situations where we play for an imaginary audience, like maybe when you do a CD, right? The mm -hmm. audience is also not there. Mm -hmm. But I find it very brave, those organizers who start again, and who try to start again, mm -hmm. even if it's really, really difficult. And of course, maybe to make a bow, because slowly I do have to go um, to finish the rehearsals, um, maybe 
to, to say that about tomorrow, um, of course, it makes me also a bit nervous. Yeah, this is a complete different setting to start mm -hmm. concerts again. And your audience has to come with masks. What, what, what should I play with an intermission or not play with an intermission? And how do they feel? How can they hear the music? But I would like to say all of us who are going slowly to restart in these weeks, that those who cannot restart yet, you will, we will, and um, maybe in some different ways than before, but definitely I take everybody with me on stage tomorrow because it's for all of us. Mm -hmm. And our artistic profession cannot be replaced and is more important than ever. For some countries, maybe more than for others. In Lithuania, they say, if the arts are not well, human beings are not well. Mm -hmm. What a fantastic sentence. Um, and of course, also in my home country here, I think it's, it's amazing how much, uh, even from highest governmental side, they say that artists are important yeah, and, and there is help. Um, I think there is so much to do. There's so much to do, even if right now we feel like we're completely frozen. There's so much to do and we have to bring it back to small places, um, to small halls and, uh, and reach out to people who have no access to what we have grown up with. For us, it's natural that any age of our childhood, we could be in concerts and so many cities, they don't have that anymore. So I think there's so much to do. And uh, I think also for the young generation who is maybe not knowing how the future will look like, um, we should not despair. There is enough to do. Maybe now is a chance really to bring the, the music to, to start really in the new very small places because there is no other options and that maybe is the the way how we can bring it back to the smaller places as you said before yeah indeed yeah. would you have a little still time to go through the rest of the pictures or would you need to go because it's a pity not to show them so if we can just quickly maybe just go through because it's really a uh, pity not to show this is okay. also a beautiful also picture of yours if there is any story which you would like to say behind, of course, you are very welcome. Otherwise, I don't want to take your time, but of course, it's pity not to show them. Here you are teaching. Again, you are pregnant, but <laughs> it's, so, it's so gorgeous. Yeah, that, that was for you teaching. Remember, you could not enter yes. the country. You didn't have a visa and you asked me to jump in. So you see, this is the picture of jumping in for you, which was a great it, honor, Jana. This is it. <laughs> Here's the proof. <laughs> and here... It's the, yeah, also another picture of teaching. And here's Miss, 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 Miss McDonald, of course. And it's probably, I would guess, it is in the concert hall in, in Bloomington, isn't it? Yeah. I it's our hall. Our hall, yeah, indeed. Yes, uh, yeah. yes. and we announced, you know, uh, Miss McDonald and I, we created this exchange between Bloomington and Israel, the competitions, that the first prize winners get to play the opening concert in uh, vice versa in each competition. Right. So here um, we announced Yu Ying Chen from China, playing for the first time at the USA. Wonderful. This picture I know, and it's uh, from, I don't know, you were 20 or something like that. You were very, very, very young this picture but it's very known picture at least i i remember it it has been everywhere and this is also a nice picture with agne as well yeah and this was uh, we we tried to make the competition of israel also known in other cities and mm -hmm. we're trying to have fundraising concerts throughout uh, europe so this here is the state of baden-württemberg embassy that's my home state in Germany and uh, invited Agne to play and it looks terrible it looks like I'm all the time pregnant but of course it was that time before going to the competition <laughs> <laughs> but here you are not pregnant <laughs> it's another picture which is beautiful <laughs> from your concert I have here in also Malta. when you were that, yeah that was Malta last year with the world premiere of Albert Pace who mm -hmm. um yeah took me the first time to his home country and uh, it's been 20, he was on my jury in Rome at a competition. So mm -hmm. that would have been 2000 on the first time now I was in Malta for premiering wow. his piece. Very and did you, bring the, did you bring the harp there to Malta? Because in Malta, I don't know if there is any. They have harp? There's a very, very lovely harp. Anybody who wants to go to Malta, um, mm. there's a 
a dear colleague, Jacob, I think we need a database worldwide with hubs um, of colleagues who are willing to, to borrow their hubs so that we can be just like other instruments. We really need to create a database. Uh, I, I'm Very sure we would all have each other. Yes. Great idea, Flora. <laughs> <laughs> is it also from Malta or is it uh, another place where you have That is Bloomington. That's Melanie Meschner who made this beautiful poster with showing Berlin and coming to Bloomington. Oh, yeah. Coming home. yeah, I see that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. And here it is uh, with just me, Nushek. It's a lovely girl also. In Bangkok. It, That's in Bangkok. Bangkok, yeah. And here you are with your husband and with your child. Oh, and with, um, um, help me please, from London, um, Eleanor Turner. Isn't it Eleanor oh, Turner? Yeah, maybe. yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's true. It's Eleanor Turner. And we, we met on the plane to Australia when we went mm -hmm. for the World Hub Congress to Sydney. She suddenly sat behind me. She was, very, she, was, she was very naughty. We were also tired after this long flight. And then she put a picture on Twitter, you know, at six in the morning. <laughs> Gorgeous picture. Anyway, it's gorgeous picture. And here you are like an ambassador, you look like. I do not remember where this was. But it was probably also in, in Thailand or somewhere in the yeah. here is a gorgeous picture from you playing as well. This is uh, I think this is Hong Kong, the world premiere of Deadlift Glanard. Uh-huh, I see. This is yeah. also a picture where you are teaching. Oops. <laughs> what am I doing here? <laughs> Showing how to play. <laughs> here it's also with, um, I, I remember the name, but uh, now, oh my God, I, I knew that I remember. Lisa, Lisa. Lisa, yeah, Lisa, Lisa yeah, Tan, 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 yeah, indeed. And, and here in New York, we, we decided to meet. I, I must say what I missed very much when I arrived in Bloomington, I had not enough time to recreate all those meetings with, mm -hmm. you know, the harpists and colleagues from the time I, I met. And Lisa Tannenbaum was one of the few I was able to mm -hmm. meet in New York. And between this picture and the last meeting were mm -hmm. 25 years. We met for the first time in Central Park. Yes. And I just love that. I think we have this gift in our profession uh, because maybe also of the instrument and because we are very open minded. When we meet or when we get invited around the world, we are together with our colleagues and we really create friendships and we want to know how is the other one doing and how does it continue. Um, I think it's something very unique and it, it, it's not true that harpists are not kind with each other, it's all the contrary. I think if we compare mm -hmm. this to other instruments, I don't think they necessarily, violists also do. My mm -hmm. husband can't go anywhere without meeting one of his friends, but I think it's very special for us. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, you you really bring us together now when we cannot meet for the World Hub Congress. It's really wonderful. <laughs> so I, I hope you don't have more pictures, which are I very have a lot of them. I have a lot of them. We can go quickly about. <laughs> so this is also. It has been somewhere. I know that there were many pictures, but I only took one with all this group of people. I think that the. Maybe you can say who is the lady on the very left, maybe if you remember, because this lady was really often mentioned at this uh, at yeah. that group of... Yeah. So this, this is a private picture of the composer's family. He mm -hmm. has many siblings and he came with them. The lady, um, second to the right, she is uh, blind mm -hmm. and she said the most beautiful things because she hears with... Yeah, she hears in a different way. Oh. Um, the composer is to my right side, or you see the gentleman from the third from the left. Mm -hmm. And the lady very outside is the 95 or nine, even more year old mm -hmm. mother of the composer who came and we had a bit, we had a two months old baby in the concert hall and this lady. Mm -hmm. Very human, very, yeah, I just love that. Amazing. It was in Malta. He is a very nice picture with the flutist, uh, Lucas. I played with him as well in oh. 2018, in January. And this picture, I was probably taken before that, because it, I, when I saw the uh, when I saw the date, I thought like, well, it has been before I met him as well. So it, he's really wonderful. 
And here um, we look. Lucas, Lucas is my preferred chamber music partner. Mm. Um, it's just absolutely fabulous. We, we, we just sit down. We don't even rehearse much. And it's such a trust and confidence. And I believe also stylistic understanding we share mm. and, and so much humor. And um, yes, it is, it's really, I must say, it's my preferred chamber. But I, I, I bore him a little bit to you. <laughs> <laughs> no, we played only twice in the Mozart concerto. <laughs> In Germany, <laughs> I totally understand you. <laughs> Where is that? This is a master class, probably yeah. somewhere. I see also master some of my recent students. They are there, so it has. I have no idea where was it, but I just saw find out, and I said I have to post it so that you see yes, that. Is and here I saw this this picture, and because it has been some kind of, I found later on the YouTube also some video, which is about more than one hour. What was that? Was it a concert or um, was it some interview as well? That was recently. Um, it mm -hmm. was just before the lockdown in Bloomington that mm -hmm. we have an office of entrepreneurship. They invited me for an interview. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing about this video is, I was quite a bit critical about new medias and this whole idea that you have to sell yourself to have a career. I mean, it's just not my education. And mm -hmm. I also see the struggle for the younger generation that, you know, that there are all these expectations on the very perfect mm -hmm. picture. Mm -hmm. And I was discussing that in the interview with Alan Barker, who heads the office. Mm -hmm. and. Just like a punishment for my critical words, the camera stopped. And we only have the audio recording. So I find that <laughs> sensational. <laughs> it was a sign, right? <laughs> it was yes. a sign. Here is yes. some jury, probably. It was, uh, I remember it was meant, but I can't remember now. You certainly can say, where was it? But it was some jury in. Some it is in 2013. I think it is, I would guess it is Hungary because I'd see Chilla on the very right. Yes, and is this not Melinda Feletar from Hungary? Mm -hmm. Is it not Seget? It's Seget. It's Seget, yeah, indeed. It's Seget, indeed, indeed, indeed. This is in the USA, International High Competition, as a jury. Yeah. yeah. And here we are with the group in Indiana University. It's also with Miss McDonough there. So there are all the students. Yes, and to the very left is Melanie Meshner, I mentioned, uh -huh. um, who was the assistant in these last uh, three years, no, two years. Now she graduated. Mm -hmm. Such, such, such a wonderful uh, musician and harpist. And the last one of Miss McDonald to. Um, to continue studying with me, yeah. very special young person. Yeah, Wonderful. and always on top of things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ah, you know her because she also organized for the USA Hub competition. She was together with Erin, with right? Arian, mm -hmm. uh, indeed, Miller, indeed. Booker Miller. Yes, indeed. Yes. And here is with Emmanuel song as well. Yeah. It's also yes. during the competition. Here I found some article about you, but uh, of course I thought that first we will read it, but. Uh, People who want, they can just stop it and they can read it later on. <laughs> so, and here is a wonderful picture also from the probably the same same masterclass as before because there are also some of my recent students. And ah. here, and here we have also the. This is from Thailand because I was checking where was that, and it's very interesting that there is a competition in Thailand. It's really very unique. It was 2015. You see uh -huh. in the front, to the very left, um, Her Royal Highness. Yeah, you know her from Hong Kong. And yes. she has um, set up the entire um, hub center in Bangkok mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. with a very, uh, like, with an incredible far vision. And uh, yeah, what an outcome to really found that. And I think. There are 20 harps or even more, 30 harps, mm -hmm. which went mm -hmm. to Bangkok with young musicians um, okay. learning the harp from scratch. And of course, Catherine Finch and yeah. Lynn Bennett who came to the jury. And in the back, it's Judy. And I think the lady from Japan, I'm not quite sure. I don't want to say a wrong name. But 
we were all together for that very first competition. I think it was 2015 or was mm -hmm. it 12? 12 mm -hmm. maybe. Do not remember. And today I see there are lots of Thai names uh, participating in master classes and world of mm -hmm. progress. It's it's really a new country coming. It's as amazing. Well. It's amazing. Yeah. And I found this picture which I have not also seen before. And this is probably from England, right? When I was yes. playing there. Yes, of course. And you played in the church on the hill, which maybe you remember. It has a very special form. It had eight corner. Uh, no, six six corners mm -hmm. and there were when you came in it was obviously a church and at the same time there was the david star mm -hmm. and and that was the place where the father of parish alvas was an organ player was an organist to the church right. but at the same time there's this jewish heritage also of parish alvas yeah mm -hmm. which is not completely proven and you mm -hmm. see it when you go into this church so it has it looks like a synagogue and at the same time it's this beautiful church I just loved it and we made it the concert place and you gave I remember that a stunning recital Jana you came no it's it's I, I'm so it was so touching and also to find this picture you know it was so lovely he is the he's the uh, another is the composer we were mentioning before already yeah this is the same concert you found mm -hmm. I think now I find my way out you are you know, showing <laughs> the same picture on the same concert. <laughs> this is the Hong Kong, and there is Isabel Moretti and Young is there, and uh, yeah. I can and recognize. To the very left, I think to the very left is Sandrine Chatron, who right. now uh, is professor of harp in Geneva, and who followed followed me there. Wow. I think it's Sandrine. Yes. Wonderful. And yes. here is uh, Miss. Yeah. This is Michelle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We were talking about her in Vanderbilt, indeed. And yes, here, know that also beautiful from probably also from Hong Kong or from Thailand or somewhere because it's also seems to be. And I here is know. you at the concert, which is also a nice yes. picture. That was the that was the final concert, the uh, concert d'adieu or farewell concert in Geneva mm -hmm. and um, to you see Hanna Borka to my right from Hungary and then Edri Javash who is now uh, yeah like the main column of the organization for Cheren's festival in Istanbul mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, and also I think getting married soon um, then we have Ilam Lai from Hong Kong in the mm -hmm. um, uh, how do you call this color uh, in the yeah. dress, um, oh, yeah, yeah, Big, big, yeah. Both, both be all, be all. <laughs> and, great, yeah. And she's she's very special, she traveled all over the world. And just before the lockdown to get mm -hmm. out of uh, of the country, she flew over to Canada to be with her family, just a brave young lady. And she is also, um, of the very first to start being on stage again because Hong Kong has zero infections. So mm -hmm. that's really mm -hmm. congratulations to Hong Kong, yes, absolutely. And here is another picture with uh, other students. Yes, this is um, oh, that, sorry. That's a picture. Sorry, that's a picture of my fully of the mm -hmm. of the first semester, um, reaching out to other colleagues um, for joint master classes. So this here is mm -hmm. Emil Naumov, uh -huh. a grand pianist from France, very good friend of Marielle Nordmann, played with her and Tabiet Zimmermann, one of our giants in Bloomington and. Uh, he uh, gave a masterclass on Liszt's work. Uh, we play on the harp, yeah. So on Suspiro uh, and and um, yeah, we mm -hmm. were all mouth open. Fantastic. Here is uh, probably right, your harp, maybe yes. The, yes. <laughs> with your child. It's your yeah, one of. Yes, it was. It was a very. Um, it was a difficult decision in Bloomington um, to, to 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 fly out and to make this quick decision to ship my harp. So this mm -hmm. time my harp went with the transportation mm -hmm. of all belongings, and the harp was not even out of tune when it arrived. So I was wow. really amazed. Wow! And this <laughs> to the left is my little son. <laughs> and here's also your two sons and your child, your girl, your your uh, daughter. Yes. No. Yes, this, this is a very special picture for me because, oh yeah, I have to say that. And that's the last thing I'm going to tell you, and I really have to. Uh, <laughs> um, very quickly, so, I will go very quickly afterwards <laughs> with the pictures because I want to show them. <laughs> um, this this picture is special for me. It's, it's, it's a little premiere. 
So no, nothing special. They're, they're just children, right? We, we love our children. But um, so when you give a concert at IU, um, there, there are 1,600 concerts, I think, per academic year. Mm -hmm. So when you want to go on stage, the person before you is still receiving uh, the accolades and the congratulations and you mm -hmm. actually can't walk on stage. And when you have finished your concert, the next one is already coming and in and looking at you grumpily because you should be out of the hall and they want to play. <laughs> and, <laughs> and it's all the time like that. It's an airport. Yeah, it's like drive in and drive out. And whether you have a harp or a double bass or a piano, nobody cares. You have to be fast. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's, of course, not an easy situation when even at the Berlin Philharmonic Hall, it's all yours. <laughs> and you can stand as long as you wish and welcome your guests. So after this concert, all of the students had to rush and to run because they had the exams, had to prepare this and that. And nobody really had time to conven reconvene and you would say, OK, we do it on another date. But the concert is the concert. And I was raised that you celebrate a special moment. So I had the son of the neighbors and my own children. They put the balloons out of the car and he said, so mom, we go to eat. And I found myself in concert dress and these four children in a restaurant somewhere at Starbucks, you know, and they were celebrating this concert moment, which they had slept through, of course. They were on the Empora and they had slept through the entire concert. And for me, it's a very special picture. <laughs> I totally can understand <laughs> how sweet, how really sweet. I want to show this is the room of your teaching in Bloomington at the uh, Indiana University with your name on the door, our really famous room 003. And uh, then it's you with Marielle Norman as well. Which I was maybe, let me mention something about this picture. The lady in our middle is a descendant of the last sultan in Turkey. Wow. And her, so Parish Alvas, when he went to Istanbul to perform, it was for her ancestry. And she didn't know about our festival. And suddenly we met uh, in the elevator. Um, mm -hmm. I believe Princess Morosi is her name. And to Morosi, Parish Alvars, to the family Morosi, dedicated his souvenirs from the Bosporus. And suddenly this lady was with us. Oh my it God. was really an amazing, an yes. amazing moment. That's amazing. Absolutely. And I have also a message from Sandrine that she's with us here today. So thank you very much for that <laughs> message. And <laughs> Alala also said that it's a wonderful picture. So I'm very happy that we enjoy you and that you you are pleased by that here i have found a picture that you were probably practicing too much <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh yes it, i mean madame nordman also talked about it the accidents we can have mm -hmm. and i mean only all this cleaning with the pandemic yeah what does it do with your hands we really need to be careful this year is the story of i mean fingers in blood because mm -hmm. the harp was new Mm -hmm. And I had no time. I was warming up quickly. It was Salcedo variations. And I realized two hours later that everything was full of blood. And oh it, the harp was brand new, a fantastic instrument, but the string still very stiff. And that happened just two hours before the concert. And you do what? You mm -hmm. know, and it's, it's also part of our profession. Mm -hmm. um, I think, luckily, I mean, it happened in my childhood and even my little daughter said, mom, why do I get blisters if I try to play the harp? But um, it was thanks to Milda Agazarian um, once she showed me a way to warm up that I never had blisters again, um, you know, especially when there was some time in between. And uh, this, however, that was a heavy experience. And that was in Istanbul on the 15th of January. But let's oh, knock on wood. Never again. <laughs> Indeed, absolutely. <laughs> Here we have, oh, Mar Miriam Serfas is also with us. Thank you very much for for wonderful message. And we have also another message from, from Germany. Thank you so much for all your comments here. And uh, quickly, just that I will not take your time, but the front, I really want to spend as much as possible. But uh, here are also some with some other students of yours or some masterclass probably. Here it's yeah, also. Is the, 
Yeah, this is the, the, the photo of the four generations, if you want to go mm -hmm. one back. Um, oh, yeah. That is Eje Yavash with her young generation of Turkish students. So Eje is next to me on the right side. And the mm -hmm. young lady, Giedre, um, to my left side, the blonde lady, she is from mm -hmm. Lithuania and is the student of a student. She won oh. first prize in the youth category. So that's one of the pictures where I felt like a musical grandma. Wonderful, wonderful. We have greetings from Silke. You probably also know her. She was also with us. And here also from Adona, from, from Poland. So it's oh, lovely. Nice. Yes. And here we have a program from Parish Alvars. Or is it something? This is, that's the, the score I just mentioned, which he dedicated. Mm -hmm. If you look into it, if you zoom into it, it's um, dedicated to the Princess Morosi or Morosi mm -hmm. at the time. Yeah, you see, and that's uh, the lady we saw in the middle between Madame Nordman and me mm -hmm. is a descendant mm -hmm. of exactly that family. And it's Constantinople, so that was the former name of Istanbul. Wow, wow, fantastic. And here it's uh, also with Michelle. Yeah. And that was uh, for the first time we did an orchestra rap class uh, mm -hmm. with a competition uh, mm -hmm. at uh, Bloomington's IU and uh, Michelle and Fen Fen were on the jury. So that's one of the happy pictures afterwards. After yes. many, yes. many, many hours of listening. <laughs> and here's some picture from, from the past. You are in the middle. You are the first one from the left. And, and, right? is to, and wait a second, Sharon is to my right. Oh, she, it's the, oh yeah. Oh, yes, of course. She, Sharon is on your right. Yeah, Shirin mm -hmm. and Cheren are both yeah, there, and their students. And AJ mm -hmm. is also on this picture, I believe, at the very end, the second from the end. If I'm not, I'm not quite yeah. sure. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Yes. This picture is history. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. And yes. this is from Line and Healy in Chicago, in the factory. Yes, we have we have chosen a new hub for the mm -hmm. hub studio at mm -hmm. IU, and um, I thought. It's good for the students to know how to choose a hub. So we all went together. I loaded them all in my car and we went all the way we drove. And what happened? The moment I left Bloomington, it started snowing. And I had oh. all these young talents in my car and I thought, all you can do is pray. And um, yes, we had four, five hours. Usually it's four and a half hours. I don't know. We took seven, but we made it and we brought a very beautiful hub back, which unfortunately wow. during the lockdown, during the lockdown, it's just sitting there and mm. hopefully being played soon. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> in because I didn't know before I look uh, the people, but I knew that it's in uh, in Hungary in Budapest because I know this class of of uh, Andrea Vik who is next yeah. to your left, and now from my our side is on the right next to you, and it's her class, beautiful class. I remember this place, so. It's nice to see all these students. It's probably, it's probably the most beautiful academy of music in the world. Absolutely. And of course, it has, a, it has a special connection to Bloomington because the giants who founded the legacy of Bloomington, Starke and Sheberg, they came from mm -hmm. the Ferenc Liszt Academy. Mm -hmm. And that's that's that home. And so I, I asked Andrea Wieg if she um, would receive us. And we went to look at the academy. She was mm -hmm. so generous and we met her students. Mm -hmm. I think um, a very special place is Hungary indeed for the music and for the culture. Absolutely. And I must say that Andra, who is going to be also our guest for the Meet of the Stars, but she's a, a not only the harpist, not only the teacher, but she's also the dean of the yeah. school. It's absolutely, absolutely amazing. No. Yeah. The only and, harpist in the world to be a dean. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> indeed. Yes. Yes. And here's your, yes. again, your two, two kids, two twins. With yeah, the it's, just, it's just a picture to show how much they have always been part of the mm -hmm. life with my generous students. And uh, yeah, it, they, they also miss them when they graduate. Of they course. Really, they really ask for them. I can imagine. <laughs> and here's your family also. Yeah, that was, um, that is not everybody yet, but it was at the beginning of the very last semester. Mm -hmm. um, so in happy times when we couldn't imagine what we have right now. And uh, with some new students, Ari to the very right is a composition uh, mm -hmm. and harp major. And uh, Diego is from Brazil. And then mm -hmm. we have Charlene who won with Taylor in Istanbul uh, an International Chamber Music Prize. 
And then wonderful Melanie, who loves and is the spirit of our class. Yes. <laughs> and this is our legendary class in Bloomington 003. Yes. Exactly. This is when we are not so serious and we are having fun. It's mm -hmm. a harp Miss McDonald donated to us. It's a mm -hmm. harp which is actually based on paper. And uh, how can I explain it? It has some metal strings, but not really. And the pitch changes according to the paper you put underneath. I've never seen something like that. And and uh, yeah, mm -hmm. she gave it to us, but it's quite it's it's quite something. That's amazing. So we are trying yeah, I, I'm sorry, I don't have, I'm not at home. I would show a picture of that yeah. I've never seen. Amazing, amazing. And mm -hmm. here's Miss McDonald when she teaches. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. One of her master classes when she came and uh, just, you know, every detail she says, um, she always immediately points her finger into the most important. And um, she she has that, that gift of finding the best fingerings and, mm -hmm. Um, pointing out to a young artist in a good way how to develop and how to progress. It's, it's, it's a real gift and it's it's a treasure to listen to. That's true. And here also... Now I would like, ah, I would like to say farewell, dear Jana. I can't go, but in 10 minutes I have to start rehearsing. Ah. Yes, <laughs> five, five more pictures. It's really uh, to the end. So here's again another group of your students. And here I just want to, uh, here is another one uh, funny one with your students in Bloomington. I can see really nice, nice atmosphere. Here it's your child. <laughs> yeah, it was it, it when it started that we needed masks and there were none in the US. It was his idea to build a mask yourself. You just take the, the thing from the kitchen and you have a mask. <laughs> you can <laughs> And here's a program of your concert. It was uh, last year or this year still? No, this this is really um, like it's a nice bow that we meet today, you and me, and tomorrow is uh, like my restart. And this was my last concert before the lockdown. And it was mm -hmm. basically one of the two last concerts at IU. Mm -hmm. um, and it was dedicated to my all of my teachers. So every teacher got a specific piece. And I also replayed the replayed the very very first piece which I remember having mm -hmm. performed as a child, um, and so every teacher got a specific piece. And I yeah I would explain a little bit why. Um, I also found some pieces which Henri Grenier transcribed and which I didn't know before, but Maria Nordmann played by Stephen Heller. Mm -hmm. Yes, lots of um, interconnections. I think that's what I'm very interested in to interconnect all these question marks we have in life. That's very beautiful. And to finish the pictures is the picture which I left at the end. It's probably your home in Bloomington with the weird tears there. It's unbelievable that uh, the, the nature, even in the city, it's uh, still alive there. It's really something very special in Bloomington. Yes, I wanted to I wanted to show that with for those all who have been to Bloomington. It is amazing how many wild animals just walk over your way. And of mm -hmm. course, the famous squirrels, but also the deers. And it has become under the lockdown time even more. Nature just as here, yeah, mm -hmm. just regained its space. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think we can marvel at it and, and hopefully continue to have nature take its space a little bit back. I hope so too. And Florence, I know that you are very much concentrated on also the contemporary pieces and that you are playing uh, many of those uh, compositions. Is there any new compositions which you are now working on to bring to the life uh, and to show to the audience in this <laughs> couple of months? Um, several. Um, it, 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 it was very beautiful for me that in this moment where everything stopped and we had no idea how long it could take, Albert Pachi wrote wrote me, so the concert was finished, here's the score. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was an, an incredible moment, also of hope, yeah, of hope. And, and uh, mm -hmm. I think we all went step by step to not know in which um, time frame we can think of our musician's life again. So he sent me a new concerto he has written. It looks very promising. And then tomorrow we play a piece by Victoria Kaunzner, who is a composer lady, uh, mm -hmm. which is original for uh, violin and harp. It's not a world premiere, but it's a very, very recent piece. Mm -hmm. And um, 
uh, what else? Let me see. Yes, I have on my mind who's going to be my next composer. I'm going to nag for a world premiere. I have found, I have found, and I, I can only say that much. Um, it's a lady. It's a lady composer and um, absolutely wonderful language. So I hope everybody might enjoy that. <laughs> Certainly will. And Florence, it, of course, you are not on Facebook, you are not on the social medias, but uh, I would be very glad if you are so kind to always contact me with any of the new information. I will be very pleased to, to share with the audience uh, your new projects and your new concerts and anything what comes out in your life, which will be really certainly very interesting it's always your life it's so full of colors and full of excitement and i wish only that uh, tomorrow concert will be wonderful as always you will enjoy it and you will bring all the light to the people finally after all these lockdowns and that you will have a wonderful time i wish you a great concert and i thank you so much for the wonderful time sorry to take you so long and i appreciate it that you took actually one hour more than you expected with us and thank you for that and thank you that you you shared all your stories and i hope we will have chance to see you again so that you can continue with all the the new excitements and all the experience you have from your life thank you so much jana it's all my honor i i cannot add anything to that but it's been a very special moment you feel like there are many many with us we are together and it maybe shows that even it's a screen, there is energy and there's beauty and we are together united and I'm looking forward to that in real life, especially to see you again, dear colleague and friend. Yes, Me. all the best. I wish, and, yeah, I wish you also all the best and safe trip back home after, after the yes. concert and all really many, many, many success and be healthy and stay safe. Merci beaucoup to all of us, to all of us, to all of Thank us. You. Thank and you. Thank you to everybody to be with us today. I wish you a wonderful evening and uh, we'll see you soon. We will have another, of course, guest on Tuesday. So I will make the announcement and you will see. You can also, of course, search in the in the list of the uh, events we have at the Harp Channel. And I'm very happy to be with you. And thank you that you are with us. Thank you, Florence, again. Have a wonderful concert. Have a wonderful evening. Great rehearsal and I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye. Bye. -bye.